it's um one i did want to handle is lee asks will there be a zk ibc hmm. this one yeah and yes there will there's a number of people working on this um you know one team i would highlight is the union team um they are working on some zk ibc and you know polymer has been very prominent in pushing this zk ibc narrative there's also a number of other folks. One thing I would say about ZK IBC is that it's just IBC, but with different proofs underneath. And, you know, there's a lot of effort involved in making those ZK proofs work within an IBC context. Um, and those ZK proofs themselves are kind of pushing the envelope of what's possible right now. And, and there's just a very interesting dynamic in that ZK market right now. Um, which if I can take a brief sort of detour here, um, if you saw the announcement yesterday of the succinct ZKVM that takes Rust input, that's a great example of something that's gonna obsolete work of hundreds of teams potentially. And something that gives that great performance with that level of developer experience is just head and shoulders above what else is out, out there on the market. And in the ZK industry, this kind of thing where it's like a new level that completely wipes a lot of the existing playing field is happening on a yearly or bi-yearly basis. So anyway, um, that's just an interesting thing about that market. But uh, yes, ZP, ZK IBC is a thing. It's coming. We will likely see the first versions of it live this year. Probably Q3 is my guess, maybe late Q2. Do you know what's the stage of Polymer right now? I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't also heard any. I think they announced their race like a couple of weeks or months ago. They had a huge race. They've got a great marketing team. Um, they're kind of continuing to push the narrative. I have not seen a lot of their work. One note about these ZK things is that there's uh, a lot of closed source code and there's a lot of competition between teams to be mm. the first to go do something so the teams tend to be quite secretive um you know the union team i've seen their code working in test nets you know they they run a we're, we're in their uh strange love runs a validator in their test nets so they have their code working between sepolia and their test net they've been very active on the bd side but I, I think that regardless of who is first or gets the most volume, the ZK IBC thing is going to be a huge vector for all of this L2 liquidity coming into Cosmos and vice versa. Um, and when we're talking about network effects for IBC, already extremely strong. And earlier in the show, when we're talking about all of these new projects and how much more TVL and market cap there is in Cosmos, that drastically increases the IBC network effect and has gotten us to this place where the IBC economy, if you think about it that way, is self-sustaining and kind of continuing to grow on this nice trajectory. Um, this yeah. CK IBC stuff is going to open up an entire new set of folks. And when we think about the interoperability protocol wars, this is going to be the thing that like wins it for IBC. It's like once we're available and truly all of these EVMs with the same semantics and people can really start building robust systems and developer tools around that. Um, and we've got some exciting stuff there that I can't wait to share. Um, I, I think there's going to be this huge explosion and we've seen the first part of it this year. Yeah, no, IBC is definitely getting out there. Um, and I think we're almost crossing a hundred chains right now, right? Or mainnet a hundred IBC chains. Yep. That's wild, yeah. Yeah. Um, should we talk Atom, Cosmos Hub? Yeah, do have let's do it. Yeah, so you said earlier, like a year ago or something, the, the Atom dominance was around 70%. Now it's around 10, 15%. Those are uh, estimates, I. but yeah, the, like the is, magnitude of the change right, is, is it's probably it, It's probably even less, to be honest. I mean. If you compare fully diluted valuations for sure like t alone is 20 billion <laughs> so yeah um but yeah i mean you know i've been obviously covering 
the launch of asteroids, inscriptions, CFT-20s, now the Babylon announcement, Neutron and Stride are gaining traction. Like, how do you see, see kind of the relevance of the Cosmos Hub these days? Um, I think that's a great question. You know, we've had this discussion on the call multiple times, but I think that the hub is yet again at a place of identity crisis. You know, we passed that proposal last year for Informal to be the hub team, and the Informal team has a very opinionated version of what they think is right for the Cosmos hub. And it is strengthening the Cosmos hub as a state machine and as an independent entity through shared security and things like mega blocks. Um, I don't really understand the Atom Wars thing, to be honest. It seems like a meme and I don't understand the technical implementation there, but um, things like time wave and making Atom interchain money, you know, that's the focus right now. And I think on the money front, there's going to be a strong competition from folks like Celestia. And now there's USDC in the ecosystem that's going to take a lot of that moneyness away. So uh, between Celestia, DYDX, Injective, Say, other projects launching, Dimension, um, all of those have tremendously valuable tokens that they are also pushing to be interchain money or modular money, as the case may be. Um, so last year when adam had zero competition for that they took a long time to get to the place where they were like shipping products in that area and we still haven't shipped significant products in that area um besides stride and liquid staking but that actually benefits all of the other modular money competitors um <clears throat> so yeah we'll, we'll see how adam competes for that on the shared security front with projects like Ethos and Saga and Celestia coming to market, there is now significant uh, competition for the shared security offering that Adam has. And I think there are increasing questions as to why projects like Neutron or Stride, which could easily fund their own validator sets, are going to continue to work on and with the hub, especially if it's not the only game in town anymore. So I think that the Cosmos hub is at a bit of a crossroads right now. Um, whether or not the momentum that they've developed over the last six months can can carry them uh, is kind of up to the community. But I do think that the Atom Accelerator DAO is doing a fantastic job and the informal team has done a great job at executing on their roadmap. What do you think about this uh, Babylon announcement? I don't know if you got to yeah. look at it properly. I think that if you want restaked Atom and you want Atom to be money, introducing Bitcoin as a <clears throat> com competition for that, for security, um, makes me question the need for hub security. Um, so I love Babylon. I think that Bitcoin is deeply aligned with the Cosmos ethos, and it's great to see Bitcoin coming into Cosmos in a real way. I'd love to see more of that. Um, whether or not it is bullish for the hub is kind of up in the air for me right now. Hmm. Your take on inscriptions. Asteroids. They're really fun. They're fun. I don't think there's anything else to say besides okay. that. People are clearly having a blast with them. I've inscribed a few things. Um, you know, this has always been one of Jay Kwan's huge things that he wanted to see was people doing inscriptions. And, mm. you know, the first crypto project I worked on was Blockstack, which is seeing a huge resurgence recently, just hit ATH. Uh, and that's basically doing inscriptions on Bitcoin. So there's a long history of this within crypto. I think it's really cool. It's cool to see the Delphi team building a community around that on the hub. 